Hello, welcome to November Echo Gaming. I am Ed and I am joined very sort of ethereally by... Guy, hello. Guy. <laughs> there may be some delay in this setup. I am in Newcastle upon Tyne and Guy, where are you currently? Uh, Hastings. Hastings. So about as far away from each other as we can possibly get in the Yeah, country. in the same country, yeah. If you don't know the, the uh, geography of England, I'm in the top northeast and Hastings uh, is right in the southwestish, southeastish. South East, South yeah. East yeah. Um, very, very famous for the Battle of Hastings, 1066, of course. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Um, so, are we just doing a quick event review? Uh, so we went to the Heresy Boyfriends attrition event, and I teamed up with the lovely guy Turnbull, who I originally met at the uh, Heresy event, uh, the uh, attrition event. So uh, thank you very much for teaming up with me, Guy. Always a pleasure. It was quite a few years ago we actually met for the Do you know, it is... and played against each other, wasn't it? Yeah, and you absolutely smashed my face in. <laughs> yeah, we reminisced over how much you killed 30 Night Raptors in one turn. It was, it was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I'm glad you I enjoyed did. that. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to do a quick overview of the list we took. Obviously, it, so it was 1750 each combined 3,500. Uh, 3, and um, the rules were you both had a Warlord... Uh, you got the extra reaction in whatever your phase was, but we had to nominate a main warlord, which we will get to in a second. Uh, I took Salamanders, and you had... Ravenguard. Ravenguard, if you couldn't tell by the uh, pictures behind Guy here. who's very, very cunningly set this all up. I'm very impressed with him. It's very cool. Um, originally, and I do have to state this, I was going to be a traitor. I was supposed to go with Martin, who has appeared on the channel a couple of times, and uh, I was going to be my word bearers, and Martin was going to be uh, world eaters. We were going to do this really cool thing where we had Argal Tal and Khan running together. We were going to keep a tally during the event of who'd killed how much, and we were going to sort of owe each other a drink to the person who'd killed the most. But as always, Martin completely failed me, completely let me down, and couldn't attend the event. Uh, so I begged Guy, didn't I? Sent you a message in sort of February ago, please let me be on your team again. I mean, to be fair, I didn't have a partner. Well, I'm, I'm very glad. I've, I've asked a lot of my, my other heresy boyfriends, and they either weren't interested in coming or already had boyfriends, so I was a single turn at the time. Oh, well, I'm, I'm very glad that it worked out this way. Uh, guy did not have a traitor's army and still doesn't have a traitor's army, so I was forced to go loyalist, but again, in another sort of good twist of fate, it was a reason to paint up my salamanders, uh, or re, uh, retouch up the salamanders that I originally got off John. So it's kind of worked out well in the end. Yep. All right. Enough waffling from me. We'll get into the list. We'll start with your list, Guy. Where did you go and what did you bring? Um, so, uh, obviously being a massive fan of the, the, the 19th Legion, which I've played at most of the events that I've been to, big fan of the Raven Guard in 1.0 and in, uh, and in uh, 2.0, they uh, pretty much give you free reign to bring whatever you like as long as it's not super duper hardcore, uh, although they're a little bit more lenient on what you can bring and how... Uh, abusive you could be of the systems in boyfriends because it's just a little bit of fun True. so um, in our in my tiny 1750 point list i did squeeze in the primarch himself called corax yes uh, always lots of fun playing him he's he's not he's not the most uber of all primarchs but in terms of what he could do and how he could get around the battlefield and the effect that how he could just murder most things i mean you made him feel like the most uber except on the primarchs yeah he's quite fun <laughs> you made him feel pretty uber with what you did with him, I must admit. He, he did, he did do, put in a good show in over he the did. weekend. Um, so yeah, so I started off with Corax, obviously I needed HQs, so I normally run a chaplain with him, with a Corvid jump pack, so he's got that tasty movement 14, with a mastercrafted power maul, so he can thump um, power armor mooks with impunity. And the good thing about Raven Guard, um, one of the good things about the Raven Guard Legion, is that jump infantry can reroll once to wound, on the first round of combat, which is normally rubbish because Raven's talents are a thing and chainsaws are a thing. But <laughs> the chaplain of wounds on twos at strength six with a power ball, re rolling ones is actually quite nice. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Not too powerful, but quite nice. And then I run the ever cheesy uh, librarian with, an, again, a corporate jump pack and telepathy. Yeah. So that I wasn't overwatched in the face when no. Corax and his unit charged into nasty stuff. And he did work, obviously. He helped me a good few times. I was like, please, can you use your reaction for me, please? Which I was frequently forgetting and was tunnel visioning on the, on the getting into combat. You know, please, please do yes. this for me. Help me, help me. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my core. It was Corax, um, the librarian with jump pack and force axe, and the chaplain 
and they were running around with a big old blob of 10 Dark Furies. Yeah. So I think that unit on its own came to nearly seven, 800 points. But what a unit. 14, murder death. Um, and then my core was 10 Tactical Marines, two units of 10 Tactical Marines with no upgrades or anything, just 100 point blobs to see on objectives infiltrate up the board, claim things early doors. Um, I had seven recon marines um, with Nemesis bolt guns because they're fair and balanced. We have an improviser, so I've got a tasty, tasty night vision. Um, and this is when night vision was in effect, so I could ignore the night vision and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And I, I never leave home without at least five, but this time I brought six more day fan with combi volkites and improviser, so they could pop out from behind a building or from behind the terrain and murder those pesky contemptors and leviathans at the beginning of the game, so we yeah. don't have to deal with them. A bloody and, good at it. And a little javelin with las cannons, one javelin with las cannon and multi melter to run around and pop some tanks. Yeah, man, it was a really cool little list, but bloody hell, it had teeth. It did. It, it like when you look at it on the spreadsheet, which I'm staring at now. I'm like, it's not really that much. It's not, but what I, it was much fat on it. No, no, it was trim. It was. Uh, it was real. Quick question. So your special Raven Guard jump packs, do they, is that up to your movement to 14 as opposed to 12? Yes, so they move 14, which means they get a plus three on the charge. And uh, you get the four up. Three, you get the Hammer of Wrath, and they get to re-roll, they get an in save against Dangerous Terrain Tests, which nice. I never passed a Dangerous Terrain No, you terrain failed every single one. All weekend. Yeah, yeah. So they move, you go up to movement 14, you get a four up in Vuln, and you um, against the day, day and you're bulky day, three right? as opposed yeah. to uh, yeah sorry against uh, dangerous train and you've got good. Yeah. how many points are they as opposed to a normal jetpack um, you could, with dark furies I don't really know but you can purchase them for independent characters they're an extra ten points on top of paying for a jump pack oh, alright because so, you do have to pay for it it's not just a raven yeah, guardy thing no, no okay. so the dark fury come with its stock yeah, so yeah. ten dark furies um but you can upgrade two of them to be sergeants, which is weird. So you can have, yeah, you can have yeah, ten yeah. with three extra sergeants. Um, they're about just over three hundred points for ten. Bloody loyalists, which is a yeah. sentence I said quite a lot during this event. Oh yeah, oh, change the record. <laughs> <laughs> I hated being a loyalist. I hated it. Right. Um, yeah, and my list was pretty. We never. We didn't plan them in conjunction. But they ended up working very well together. So I had sort of the anvil to your hammer. Uh, I did a very simple salamanders list. I'm pretty sure you could guess what it is. It was a fully tooled up Spartan with flare shield, searchlight, and pintle multi melter. Um, inside that was my cataphracty praetor with mantle of the elder drake, thunder hammer, shield, and master crafted. And he was running the uh, weight of duty. Uh, warlord trait so he had hatred against traitors plus one strength if they caused fear um, the hatred was just awesome because re-rolling all the attacks then I had a Primus Medicaid Cataphracty armor pretty much the same with a Thunder Hammer shield master crafted then five fire drakes master crafted on the sergeant Thunder Hammer shields obviously they all went together in a big Spartan and then I had two identical dreadnoughts both with the Gravis Melter cannon and no other upgrades and finally, rounding out the same as Guy, I had two 10-man tax squads. A little differently, I had Artificer Armour on the Sergeants and a Vexilla because flags are good, really. So I was very simple. So mine was a much uh, heavier approach, as in we, I move very stoically up the centre of the field and smash people out of the way while Guy was taking the flanks and diving all over the place and absolutely ripping people to shreds. And it was that... What do you shoot? Do you shoot the Primarch and his big blob of ablative wounds, or do you yeah. go to try and drag down a Spartan before the fire drakes hit you? Because both units hit incredibly yeah. hard. I think that's what's the, one of the strength of our lists, even though we did plan it, is they had two very big scary units running yeah. at them in different ways, and it was which one do we try and kill? Yeah, and yours was terrifyingly fast. Mine was that stoic and two dreadnoughts, which obviously it's pretty hard to ignore. And then yeah. you did your Mordathan trick, which we'll talk about a bit when we get to the games. But uh, that was a very big distraction as well, which was very good. Right. Two seconds, we'll get into the games. Okay, so game one was a really cool mission. It was called Interception. And there was basically, uh, so it was the Vanguard Strike Deployment, so sort of diagonal lines. And there were four objectives going along the No Man's Land. 
and there was an objective each in your home base, and you could score three VP for every objective you held, uncontested, in the middle, but only if you held home base. Home base was worth nothing, but it allowed you to hold the other ones. Uh, and you can only score from turn two onwards, which I thought was a really cool mission. Yeah, and the, the No Man's Land ones were literally in a diagonal line right down the middle. Yeah, 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 they were really cool. Um, we were against Pete and James. Uh, Pete had a really cool word bearers list, which was Lorgar, Biomancy Psyker, five Cataphracty Terminators in a Spartan. Uh, then he had a Marigal, he had a couple of tactical squads, one in a Rhino. I think that was about him, wasn't it? Uh, I think he had a chaplain hidden in that. Oh yeah, sorry, a chaplain as well. As well. Uh, I can't remember what else he had. That was about it, I think. That, then, was, that was the meat of it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Then he had uh, James, was his partner, had Iron Warriors, and he had uh, Iron Havocs with Auto Cannons, Leviathan, uh, Dominators, the, the Thunderhammer Special Iron Warrior Troops. Uh, and then a couple of tactical squads hanging around uh, at the back. Uh, we were quite lucky we got to go first, which was a bonus. Um, and we advanced straight up the board, didn't we? So I sort of, um, I put my Spartan dead centre and just drove across the board. My, as it should be. As it should be. Again, because <laughs> distraction can't affect. Um, your Mordathan did the most Mordathan-y of Mordathan things in the world. Would you like to explain? It was glorious. So, obviously, most of my army that's not jump infantry can infiltrate. So, I infiltrated my auto fag behind a building so that I was out of line of sight. And um, James had deployed his Leviathan. Did he have double storm cannon or was it single storm cannon? Double storm. Double storm cannon, Leviathan yep. in the middle um, on the other side of this terrain. So, I was out of line of sight. Because um, we got first turn, I scouted my auto fag because Corax gives my entire army. That's infantry and or jump or like speeders scout. So my Mordo fan scouted forward. I mean they have scout anyway. And then in turn one, I did the fatal strike on yeah. the Leviathan. Oh. Um, so fatal strike once per game. The Mordo fan that can all of their shots from their shooting attacks in the shooting phase gain red in four plus. So with six combi vol kites, that's 18. 12? 12. 12? Yeah, 12. Oh, two shots each. Sorry. 12 yeah. vol kite. Volkite shots and followed up by 12 bolt gun shots, That's all it. hitting on twos because their ballistic skill five and uh, rending on fours. Now, normally, six is enough to kill a Contemptor, seven is what you really need to finish off with a Leviathan. But I just spiked really high on the first lot of rends. I think with the first 12 shots, I got nine rends, yeah. or nine four pluses. And he just whiffed his rolls, yeah. and the Leviathan just exploded. You didn't even need to use the bolters, did you? It was didn't just even the need to use the bolters. They literally just evaporated it. It was glorious. It was awful. It was awful. As a true traitor, I, it was just disgraceful to watch. Every kill that I got on the enemy side was designed to wind you up, really. And you did a bloody good job of it, guys. Yeah. You did a bloody good job. Yeah, so straight away, you nuked his Leviathan. I thought he was going to return fire, but he didn't return fire. They were holding that... Um, I think they were holding that more for the autocannon squad. I think so. Also, I don't think they expected it. No, yeah, we did. Uh, please, please be aware. We made everyone very clear. We do not do gotcha moments. No. If anyone, we were like, right, just be aware. It's once per game. They can do this. Be aware of it. And it's still, everyone was just like, ah, be Reet. And then it wasn't Reet. It was very bad. <laughs> it was very bad. Uh, so yeah, you took out the Leviathan straight away. Then I moved forward, but not so far that he could get the charge easily onto me. Uh, and Cor Corax was sort of top left flank. And he just went absolutely hooning it around the top of the board. Um, so as the fight developed, his Marigal ended up charging... So his Marigal moved forward, my two Dreadnoughts charged the Marigal. His Marigal killed one Dreadnought, but I managed to take it out with my other. So they were Marigal-less. I think your snipers dealt with the autocannons? Yeah, so my snipers fired at the autocannons and killed quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pinned them. Oh god, yes, yeah, so you pinned them and made them run, didn't you? Yeah, but they returned fired. That's and right. And the Iron Warriors player, his... Or trait or right of war or something meant that one of the terrain pieces didn't yes, get on the terrain. That's so my right. snipers weren't getting their four up cover save yes. sitting in the building. Yep. Uh, so the auto cannons return fire and, and just wiped, wiped my snipers off the board. That's right, I forgot about Yeah, so yeah, that's what they use their reaction for. 
and yeah. wiped it. I forgot, yeah, they removed the terrain cover, didn't they? That was really cool. But losing seven snipers, but take it, essentially neutering a 10-man auto cannon squad for the game, I think it was worth it. I think so, yeah, because then he got pinned, and then he failed his morale and broke. I don't think James passed a single morale check or pinning check the whole game. It was just... Which Pete pointed out a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the amazing thing was, James had the most dice I have ever seen anyone have, and every time he rolled, he had an entirely different set of dice. It was phenomenal in its own way. Yep. It was very, very cool. Um, yeah, so as the game progressed, uh, my salamander, I kind of... He ended up... So they targeted your javelin for their word bearer's buffage, and they yeah. did manage to bring it down because his the word bearer Spartan Laz cannoned it down. Obviously, he can't gain any cover from it. Yeah, I'm so, trying to hide it as much as possible. We did, you we did just, a good job of like get it hidden running it backwards. Because we, we debated whether we should suicide it forward, but you, uh, you, I think, rightly said, look, if you can just hide it at the back, you then deny him from scoring these word bearer points constantly. Um, yeah. But yeah, he got in range with the, the Spartan anyway and killed that. So he buffed Lorgar and friends. And I kind of thought, look, my fire drakes, who were pretty central with Lorgar, can take Lorgar if he charges me, because the Salamander's advanced reaction is pretty powerful. Um, but then I started to doubt myself when he when he got a bit buffed. Um, Corex was chewing around the top field, so I decided to um, sort of break left and go for the Iron Warriors Dominator unit. And Corax came back round to come and deal with Lorgar. At this yeah. point, we were sort of batting fairly equal for objectives because our tax squads had all broken for different objectives. Um, because the snipers had died, we had to send a tactical squad back to hold home base. So that yep. sort of lost us a bit of a bit of time of scoring. So yeah, it was all going really well. We sent Corax to deal with him and his Dark Furies who were going to murder all the tactical squads on that side of the board. That's so right. So they couldn't claim objectives. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, originally that was the plan was Corax was going to go and murder all that stuff. Um, but then Lorgar, because of course he's got a command squad, he had a banner, he was scoring, or at least the unit was yeah. scoring. So we had to come and, like, my fire drakes were not scoring. So we had to come and do something, and uh, yeah, you did something pretty feckin' spectacular. Yeah, so, so uh, in true Istvan fashion, yes. Corax and the Dark Fury, with the Librarian and the Chaplain, charged into Lorgar. I mean, what a um, charge. Lorgar was it a 12 inch? Squad. What's that? Was it a 12 inch charge? Uh, I think it was a 12 inch charge. No, with your bonuses. Three, but I rolled like a 10 or 11, yeah, so yeah. It, was a, it was a long bomb It was a long ass charge. Um, got in, it was absolutely epic. Um, I th and I said to I said to you Ed, I know what I should do, but it's more fun if I just or if I just do the challenge with Corex. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had a prime Corex off. the challenge, and Pete um, was a gent. He was like, do you know what? There's only one way this is going to go. Um, so he, he accepted the challenge with Lorgar. I'm like, fantastic. Corex yep. gets to go first. I get to shred you to pieces. It would be glorious. And then my Dark Fury could just. Um, rending five plus those command squad mooks into the floor. And it worked perfectly, didn't it, guys? It worked perfectly Yep. if you was a traitor. Yes, yeah, if you were Lorgar's in it, it went really uh, well. Korax, even with the chaplain, only managed <laughs> seven wounds on Lorgar, okay. of which he passed four, three of the four four-ups, <laughs> and then the swine passed a four-up feel no pain. So Korax bounced off of him, then Lorgar hit me with his stupid hammer. His stupid hammer. His very stupid hammer. <laughs> five or six attacks did four wounds yeah. it's brutal too so that became eight wounds and then I proceeded to fail six out of my eight four plus in months and Corax evaporated it was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen it was brilliant and a brutal should be removed from the game no no yes. I loved okay, seeing I'll, it I, I'll, actually I'll, I, I reserve I re retract that statement Lorgar, Pansy Lorgar, should not have a brutal weapon. <laughs> he's he's a really sort of surprising Primark because everyone's I like, oh, he's, I, he's I was, not that I was up much. I expected to whack him off in turn one turn. I yeah. did not expect to bounce off him. And then the command squad just ate the Dark Furies, and I had like the librarian and two left of me, and they ran away. Because when you made that charge, that unit was at full strength, wasn't it? And I was just... Because yeah. at this up until this point, we'd all been going, ooh, this is rewriting Istvan, the Salamanders and the Raven Guard are getting revenge, because everything had kind of gone our way up until this point. It, it um, was going quite smoothly. And like, that's why we sent it, Korax back, because we were like, ah, he's got him, he's fine. And you just bounced, and then our entire line just collapsed. <laughs> my Death Star just died. Yeah, and uh, without your speed... I like I charged into the Dominators with my fire drinks and I, I annihilated the Dominators because I had 
Um, yeah, hatred and kill it. I've got three up in Volms and just smashed. I think I lost a couple, but I smashed them to pieces. Yeah. But yeah, with Lorgar in the middle and buffed Lorgar at this point as well, it was like, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, we couldn't do anything about that unit at that point. No, we at that point we didn't. Anything else that could take it. Yeah, because uh, I lost my Dreadnought. I think it was the last cannon fire and combined weight of arms and stuff like this. So, but it was fantastic. It was a uh, it was a really good game. And again, sort of like up and going into the last turns, we were like just losing. And if we, I think we were losing by f three points. Yeah, something like that. Um, and there was one objective. And if it worked perfectly, if we got onto that last objective. And then um, if we could kill a couple of units, we would have got last man standing, which was having more units. We would have, I think, drawn. We could yeah. have drawn. Um, but as it happened, we did get the three points for the last objective, but then they got last man standing, so they won by one they had point. two more units left on the board than us, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I say that... You know, it, was, it was a fantastically close game. Oh, it was, it was really such good. Such a good first game. Because that unit of Iron Havocs that we shot first ran, but then rallied. So they yeah. sort of sat at the back, and we were just like, ah, they're nothing to worry about. But they scored that last one. <laughs> they did yeah. disappoint, didn't they? Yeah. So oh, honestly, it was. I, I had a great first game. It was absolutely fantastic first game. It was. And uh, seeing Korax, mainly because what your Korax has done to me in the past, it was a phenomenal way to start the weekend. It was. Do you know what? It was more cathartic for you than it, I think oh, for anybody else. <laughs> mate, I was all for watching Logger. And as everyone knows, I am doing a word bearer's army, and if. Any, if I couldn't be more hyped to be doing a law guy unit just because I now know that he can do silly things like that. I'm definitely not going to be grudging you at that event. <laughs> like, but Neil, I don't want to play it. I always play it. You don't do always play it. it. No, no Ed and law guy. I'm going to be the bad guy. Right, on to game two. Game two. So this was the same day. This was up against Kenny and Tom, who had a really cool, I like, who knew you could fight crocodiles in 30k? It was amazing. It was amazing. So Tom had Mechanicum, which was a Thanatar, Castellax. Um, he, had, like, he had his Warlord in a blob of Castellax with Dark Fire Lances. Then he had a few more um, Castellax with Multi Melters. And I think that was about him. Oh, he had yeah. some Vorax, had a couple of Vorax. Yeah. Uh, and then Kenny had Militia. Uh, <laughs> so he, he had, had like the militia. big blobs of Militia. Then a couple of Ogryn, but the pièce de résistance was Beastmasters, I think you said they were called. Who... I have no idea what the unit's called. No, no idea. Need the same. And then he had Cayman, and I think he had about 10 Cayman per blob, so about 20 Cayman. And he'd basically just gone to Early Learning Centre, bought a box of reptiles, and stuck these crocodiles to GW bases. And he said the bases were more expensive than the crocodiles. Exactly. We were literally fighting an army of plastic crocodiles. We were fighting an army of amazing. crocodiles. And... My salamanders have never been happier than, than fighting a big army of crocodiles, I must admit. Uh, and it was really cool. Um, it was a um, hammer and anvil deployment, so um, looking long ways at each other. And the mission was called Power Drain. So there were five objectives, one in your own home, home world. And six, sorry, six. Six objectives, sorry. One in your own home world, and then two, uh, so four in no man's land, effectively. And units, so line units could hold objective and score you one VP. Any unit that um, could be pinned could elect to power drain an objective. Doing so would automatically pin them, but they'd score one plus D3 victory points. Yeah. Which is, uh, so you had to be able to be pinned to do it. So cavalry couldn't do it, for example. Uh, vehicles can't do it, for example. But any unit can power drain, which will become key in a moment, as you'll see. Um, we got first turn again. Which was nice. Which was very nice. And uh, would you like to enlighten everyone to what absolute war crimes your Maud Ethan did this time round? Well, before I do that, I'd just like to point out that I am a gamey summon of a bitch. So I infiltrated <laughs> my two tactical squads into No Oh, Man's God, Man yes, you did, yes. Because you could only power drain at the start of your turn. That's right. Um, so I infiltrated onto them before the game began and then auto-pinned my two tactical squads to give us... Um, extra VPs yeah. at the start of the first turn and I think my I had a, did you have a tactical squad on the back one uh, I had a tactical squad no you had your snipers on the back one that's it I had the snipers on the back one and I infiltrated my two tactical squads onto two into a no man's land and yeah. then on the D3 I rolled two sixes yeah. so that gave us seven six victory points straight off the bat even fired a shot yeah, straight off the bat, you scored six VP. Sneaky, sneaky Raven God stuff. Bloody right? loyalist. When you've got no numbers because you all died on a big battlefield, you've got to do the sneaky stuff. Fair, fair. 
Um, and then my Morde fan did indeed commit a war crime. So yeah. I infiltrated them as well and I made sure that I was in 12 inches away. And then I scouted them. Because initially inches away. we wanted to go for the Thanatar, didn't we? I wanted to go to the Thanatar. I wanted to murder the Thanatar because that thing's terrifying. Tom and was I've very canny, placed it at the back. From, uh, from 1.0 Thanatar, so yeah. even though it's not as bad now. Um, but they, they deployed very, very well. So they the did. Thanatar was in the back corner of their deployment zone and they deployed their militia lines. Um, he deployed them on like magnetic strips so he didn't have to move into the It was models. so and good, just, wasn't it? It was very clever. Yeah, and very he just good. angled the units so that there was no way that I could get within 12 inches of it and stay out of 12 inches of anything else or line of sight or anything. So they did a very good job there. Did. So I had to rethink what I was doing with my Mordé fan. So I deployed them right in front of the unit of Castellax yeah. uh, with a Magos in it, a unit of five Castellax. So I infiltrated, I scouted, I fatal struck, I destroyed, I rendered and killed four of the Castellax <sighs> out of so five awful. before they could do anything. And the resulting explosions, because they explode like a dreadnought, because his army was bunched up with a lot of militia, I think the result, the, result, the explosions did 56 wounds to their army. It was disgraceful. <laughs> it was disgraceful. Because, yeah, they, they were sort of very tightly packed in, and it was just a chain fire. Oh, God. I think it took longer to resolve that one round of sort of explosions than the entire rest of the turn. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it because was... each one exploded, and then we had to roll the range, and we had yeah. to count how many models were here in how many units, and it was a nightmare. Oh, God. But it was also hilarious. I also think I went to the toilet and got a drink, <laughs> and when I came back, it was, <laughs> it was still, still going. Wounds. Yeah, I think that... Oh, God. I've never seen something like 56 hits. It, it was, was phenomenal. Insane, wasn't it? it was phenomenal. Um, and then my javelin. Yes. Your, oh, that fucking... Sorry to swear, that javelin and the vanquishers <laughs> at the back. They had two yes, vanquishers at the back. Wonderfully painted vanquishers. Yep. My javelin flew forward and then got a lucky, typical Laz Cannon hitting, rolling a six to pen, rolling a six to explode it, and I blew one of his vanquishers up in Straight turn one. Great up in turn one. And I think that scored us, like, break their ranks and all sorts. And Oh, yep. God. Yeah. You're just a bad man guy. I didn't do it. Well, I did do it on purpose. I did do it on purpose. We did do it on purpose, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my salamanders struggled a lot more than your Raven Guard did. So, they oh, did. we should you, say you. Salamanders struggled this game. You elected to deep strike Corax, we should say. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah so Corax was. I don't normally do that, but no. I wanted to try it to see how it worked. Yeah, so Corax was up in deep strike. My turn one, there was a bit of a funnel in that there was a, um, a bottleneck on the tabletop. So I drove my Spartan straight forward, got my fire drakes basically straight out, and went after the crocodiles. But they were quite, uh, Kenny was a very good player, he sort of moved towards me and blocked in my Spartan. So I could only get like one Terminator out, sort of in a nice bit of a chain. And uh, so when I charged them, I couldn't get multiple attacks. So I did beat them in combat, but they flee, I can't chase them down. They rallied and then sort of moved back forward to block me again. So I spent the whole game basically fighting one unit of crocodiles. Because yeah, they were toughness I mean, they're, they're five. Toughness five as well, aren't they? So the T five, so I wasn't. Out. Yeah, I wasn't instant killing them. They had five up, feel no pain, so, and because I was limited in the amount of attacks, I just wasn't. I was winning every combat, just not enough to stop them, which I yeah. thought was phenomenally well played. Uh, my two dreadnoughts burned up the side, uh, one side, and fought the ogrins and absolutely pasted the ogrins. Um, I was a bit worried at one point when he was like, "Oh yeah, they've all got like invulns and thunder hammers and stuff," and I was like, "Oh bugger." But uh, I did manage to uh, did manage to take them on and beat them. Well, they are only weapon skill four. We it's, know how yeah, weapon skill works in this game. The weapon skill really really hampered them. But uh, and yeah, and all this time we're power draining left, right, and centre on lots of objectives, which is quite cool. Hastanatar was like hammering your initial um, uh, initial tactical squad, that, uh, one of the ones that had infiltrated on. But I had my tactical squads ready to just to walk on and yeah. pick them up behind you. Um, Korax didn't show up till turn three. He failed to yeah. arrive on turn two. And when he showed up, he took a bit of a pasting. Well, it did go my way. So obviously I rolled to see if he came on turn two, and he didn't, which was annoying. Yeah. And then I rolled to set, and he came down turn three. And, of course, I scattered into one of his units. So they got to place it That's within, right. within 18 inches of where the scatter landed. Yeah. So they deployed him as far away from the um, unit as possible. 
Now, obviously, I could still conga line, so I did a little bit of conga lining, but I wanted to deep strike it in the backfield so I could essentially take the head of his army yeah. and charge the other unit of Castellax with his Archmagos in it and murder them. Yes. But I just couldn't get there quick enough because there was too much stuff in the way. I couldn't reach it. So I took a pounding. I think I you took a Thanatar shot and all the dark fire lances. So my dark fury were getting pummeled. They were. They were. Um, I did manage to get the charge off because he overwatched with that unit. Um, so they did take a lot of casualties. But I got into some militia. But when a Primarch and Dark Fury is a fire militia, that's like a big adult squashing ants. It's not really <laughs> worth it. I mean, it was it was worth VPs for like attrition purposes, that's but true. it wasn't an effective use of a Primarch's time. So I wanted to get him into that big unit, but they weren't making it easy for me. No, no, no. There, there was a lot of bubble wrap around anything yeah. that actually mattered, which was really cool. And his unit, I think the militia units on a four up could come back. Yeah, but, uh, which he, he never passed. Yeah, no, <laughs> Kenny got really unlucky. He didn't sink past a single four up to bring his units back. But saying that, for the purposes of the mission, he actually had lots of units that could be scoring and doing this power drain. And uh, I will pick up, bring up the picture, but uh, there is one crocodile that deserves mentioning in dispatches because, my bloody God, this crocodile <laughs> scored more VP for them than any model. I think he scored... I think he power drained four times in total and rolled a six every time. So he's got like 16 VP just to this Great. one crocodile. That's what that guy was. Croc you hack. Hack you croc. We, we came up with so many stupid croc. Oh yeah, croc you kill. That game. Yeah, I now need to make a model of an objective with a crocodile wired into it. If anyone's seen the film Johnny Mnemonic, I always kept, I kept thinking of the dolphin that uh, they have like wired up and surfing the web. That's how, that, that crocodile was just hacking the world, man. But uh, yeah. it was for not, I was laughing my head off every time they did it and would roll the six. I was just like, get in, lads. Well it was one of the most ridiculous games I've ever played. It was hilarious. Same, same. It was utterly genius. It was utterly, yeah, my salamanders were stuck in the middle trying to get past other crocodiles uh, while uh, Hacky Croc just scored VP after VP after VP. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Eventually, though, you tore through the bubble wrap and uh, got to the juicy yeah. innards. Yeah, so I think at the end, Korax and the Librarian and the Chaplain and one Dark Fury and one Dark Fury Sergeant went into combat with all the Castellax. Yeah. I challenged with the Sergeant because I'm a gamey bastard. Uh, and then Korax proceeded to murder a strike four plus all of the Castellax one after another. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Causing more mayhem. Oh, we should also say, what did your Dravelin do turn two? Oh, uh, it fired and one shot the other Vanquish. Yeah. Two shots, two kills. You've never seen anything so horrific. I've never had my javelin do something so good. It's normally like kind of naff. Yeah, no, it was. Oh, god damn you, guy. God damn you. <laughs> Every um, time something went my way, Ed was like, for God's sake, guy, I'm trying to win something. God damn. We, yeah, so I was trying to help the opponent. At one time, I was like, you can only do this, do this. If you stop the, you can do this and stop him, because I just. Honestly, it was just like everything you can do to try and stop him. If you do this, that happens. If you do this, move around here and go here. I was trying to do everything I could to help them. But, uh, I know. In that, some, 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 sometimes during the event, it felt like I was playing against three people. Good, good. That was what I was going for, mate. That's what I was going for. Um, we did eventually win. It was kind of, we sort of took an early lead and then they pulled it back. Um, but then eventually we started to pull away, didn't we? Yeah, so early game, we definitely had the strong lead. Mid-game, like you said, it was very early. And then once once Korax got in and started murdering his, like, the Mechanicum stuff, um, their their plan kind of collapsed. They was running out of units to score things. Yeah. Um, we had units close enough to contest stuff, so they just weren't scoring anymore. And we were still racking up the drain points. Yeah. So, like, turn four, turn five, it started running away from them. Yeah, but up until that point, because whenever they rolled the drains, we started getting like ones and twos, and yeah. they they kept like yeah they kept rolling high for their drains, which was really cool. It made the game really interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, it was uh, two thirds of the game was much closer than the end results. Suggested. Absolutely, absolutely. But then yeah, once Korax was through the bubble wrap, he was he was away. But uh, I had a phenomenal game, and uh, I'm very sorry to all my other opponents, but I did vote Tom and Kenny my favourite game because... Uh, as did I. As did, yeah. I, I have not laughed so much playing a game of Heresy, in do just fighting crocodiles. Kenny and Tom were lovely. They took everything in their stride. There was never yeah. a... like. There was never a, like a... Even when it was on the downturn from them, there was never a huff or a whisper. Not that other opponents were doing that, but I'm just saying like, they just took everything 
as Heresy should be played, which is an absolute laugh and a giggle. Yeah. And uh, and it was just really, really solid play from them. And I had a great laugh. I had a great laugh taking crocodiles off the board. It was phenomenal. Yes. So fun. Lovely. Right. We're going to chat about what happened after hours. Ooh. Right. After hours, uh, myself and Guy had a wonderful little battle ourselves between, because uh, we don't often get to play that much, do we? No, not as much as I would like. Not as much as we like. Um, we're, I mean, we only live six and a half hours apart, mate. We should, <laughs> exactly. we should make more more effort. Um, so, yeah, we, I brought more salamanders. We agreed to have a 3,500 point uh, battle, and you brought your blood angels. I have 3,500 points of blood angels in tanks. It's a silly, stupid, dumb, rubbish meme list, but it's a hell of a lot of fun to use. Yeah, I mean, it's still got weapon skill 8 fucking Ralderon in it. Who well, caused me a little bit gamey, haven't you? No I've end of trouble. Tanks, I'm naturally at a disadvantage. It's true. It's true. Uh, we decided just to kick each other's tits in, didn't we? Uh, so we, much. Did, we just did Dawn of War to make life easy. Uh, we went and got a couple of pizzas. Uh, and then we just smashed each other's face. So I brought Vulcan, 10 man um, Fire Drakes, Praetor, Primus Medicae, and then just basically whatever else I had for my salamanders. You had. To be fair, you didn't need to bring anything else. Just that unit yeah. enough was enough to. Rage me. And weirdly, by the end, that's all I had, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a couple of pyroclasts, uh, a couple of javelins, an Arcus and a Sigran. And yeah, you had Kratos, a couple of land raiders, dual Omega, dual Punisher, uh, some Typhoon. paladins? Uh, yeah, two units of paladins um, in the land raiders. One unit of paladins was my my Death Star squad with Rauderon and Chaplin and a legion champion yeah, and we basically just kicked each other's tits in and the real reason we needed to do this game was to completely let off steam so i had uh for me going to an event winning most sporting is is the top prize um yeah. painting is an absolute bonus but i understand people a haven't got time they're not the same ability or don't just, just don't want to paint that's cool um so and some people just aren't that great at it, fine, cool. But everyone has the ability to be a nice opponent. So I always rate most sporting uh, as my highest achievement. So I'd said and to you, Guy... And to, in your defence, you have won it a few times, once or twice at attrition events before, haven't you? I've won it twice before at attrition, yeah. Well, exactly. And a few other places I've won it as well. Um, yeah. And so I said to Guy when I teamed up, I was like, like look, mate, I really want to win most sporting. <laughs> So this is why through most of the games I was like properly cheering when Korax was dying, helping my opponents to get around. So this game at the end uh, at the end of day one was all about letting off that steam and I think we just slagged each other rotten and just yeah. absolutely tore shreds into each other. We so, was taking the piss out of each other left, right Oh centre. God, yes. Yeah. So every time you failed a save, it was, oh, you hate to see it. Isn't that awful? And oh, yeah. what every a shame. Every time you passed a free up in vulnerable save, followed by a five plus field yeah. no pain, I was like, you gamey bastard. Yeah. <laughs> so, we just, <laughs> so we had the best time just smashing each other in. R- I will say, Ralderon not dying to the pyroclasts, I could have strangled you. Do you know what? I didn't even think about it at the time uh, until I lit that popped into my head when you Raldorn was the only guy left from his squad yeah. and then you shot me with your five pyroclasts five melters. pyroclasts meltering like, wait, 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 wait I'm going to do the advanced oh. reaction I'm going to charge you yeah you're like, okay um, the charge still goes off you still get to shoot me but I get five up shrouded so I think you whiffed like one or two shots I think I, think I hit you three times five. wounded yeah. you twice but they're well, both instant death three times did I hit you three times sorry yeah Three times. And wound three times, and yeah, they're instant death. And I was like, oh, death. we'll be fine. I passed, I passed the first four up in one, <sighs> and then I fail the next one, and you cheer, yeah. and then I roll my shrouded five up save, and yeah. I pass that, yeah. and you're like, Ugh. and you're doing and a one I, at a time for dramatics, you utter absolutely, sod. Absolutely, and then the, I rolled the next one, and I failed the in one on that one. So I just held the dice in my hand for probably was about 30 seconds just staring it was. me down. It was. Just rolling the dice. It was a bit erotic. Uh, and I didn't even look. It was like Maverick when he chucks the ace. And that was it. You didn't movie. look. You bloody mic dropped it as well. I did. I mic dropped it and it came up with six. And you're like, no. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't kill the ball. You mic you mic dropped it them. because I'd been mic dropping things on you and failing all my charges. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And then you did it to me and fucking lived. The boy who lived. Oh. The boy who lived, 
yeah, but my Land Raiders and my Kratos and my Sycorans, they were just pounding your Fire Drakes and they yeah. just would not You couldn't die. kill anything. You couldn't kill anything. Well, you killed everything but that unit. That's true, actually, but then that unit just smashed into all of my tanks. That is quite horribly. Yeah, well, <laughs> as you say, that's what happens when Vulcan, 10 Fire Drakes, Praetors and Primus Medicaes, all with hammers, hit things. Yeah. But it, it was a fantastic after hours, and it was exactly what I needed to relieve a bit of the uh, smiling smiling assassin niceness. And you beat me. And I, well, I we didn't keep score. No. no we, we didn't keep score, but I, no score. I literally ended the game with, yeah, Vulcan and a couple of fire drakes. I think you ended the game with a couple of tanks, the Omegas, and one Punisher. one Land Raider, one Punisher. Uh, I think I had one Omega. I don't yeah. know if it had died. But, and a tactical squad that had survived. That's that right. You had the Rhino tactical squad that fought a Dreadnought for the whole bloody game. I don't know how you didn't manage to break those. No. That was embarrassing. Yes, it was embarrassing. Thank you. <laughs> but no, it was a perfect um, friendly game. Perfect friendly game. And it, it was a wonderful way to spend my Saturday night. Um, especially as there were a couple of other people hung around and it was just nice to sort of chinwag and chat and see lots of, uh, lots of other people joined in helping slagging us both off. Yeah. Which was great. Which was also glorious. Yeah, I relieved a lot of the anti-loyalist hatred. <laughs> <laughs> right, we shall get on to game two, the, uh, day two, I should say. Day two and mission three was against Tiny Tom and Normal Tom. Tom Avery, who again... Two absolute top-notch lads. Uh, Tiny's about seven foot tall. Um, absolutely huge bloke. Lovely though. Uh, he was Lovely pretty. Guy, but he was pretty new to heresy, wasn't he? I um, I don't know. I guess so. Bro. I think he was pretty um, new. I got the vibe. Um, yeah. But Tom Avery, absolute spot-on bloke, and they were running a White Scars and Sons of Horus list. Uh, Abaddon in Deep Strike with um, some Drasteran and a Herald. Uh, yeah. Lots of white scar jet bikes with plasma cannons and a couple of melters. Golden Keshig with a Praetor and a Chaplain. Um, three Contemptors and one Derodeo, if I remember. I think so, yeah. Three Contemptors uh, and one Derodeo. Uh, Tom also, this is not going to be helpful. Uh, white Scar's Tom also had, uh, did he have a Storm Seer as well? Though? That's right, yes. He had the Telepathy um, Storm Seer as well, Space Magician. He had the Shutdown Magician, the same as we had. And I'm trying to think what else the Sons of Horus had here. Yeah, they had the Derodeo, a couple of attack squads, Rhino, but mainly it was Abaddon with Justerin and a couple of drones. Yeah, Abaddon, Justerin, yeah, I think he had two, two Contemptors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had and two Derodeo, and the yeah. Derodeo and the White Scars had one and all the jet bikes. Yeah, that's how it worked. The mission, again, freaking awesome, really cool mission. Very objectives based. There were Dawn of War deployment, one objective in each home base. And then there were four um, equally spaced out in sort of a, what would you say, a wiggly line, a waveform in the uh, in no man's land. And I'm reading from the book here, as you can see in front of me. Um, so at the end of the movement phase, you scored one VP if you controlled one or two objectives, two VP if you um, had three or more objectives, and um, one VP if you scored, if you held more than your opponent. Um, if at the end of the game turn, so combined, you scored two VP if they hold, if you hold your opponent's deployment zone objective, and you lose a VP if you don't hold any objectives, which I thought was really cool. Like I love objective-based games because it makes you have to think about going places. Um, when we run it's our a event, of a game, though, I, I, I couldn't wrap my head around how the blooming objectives worked. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, uh -huh. Tom kept taking. Uh, he had a little um, tally chart, which was really bloody good for us. Mm. Um, yeah, they got turn one, uh, so we deployed quite cagely in this one, um, yeah. because they had the Golden Keshig, which I know I play, they have a massive charge distance, um, obviously they had Abaddon up in Deep Strike, um, yeah, so you had to be a bit cagier with your uh, Mordathan Death Strikey thing. Yeah, I did. So you put them sort of vaguely out in front of the Derodeo, if I remember? Yeah, so I didn't, I have a track, but I didn't scout them. No. You hid them behind a building. Yeah. So they hid behind a building. They got first turn, but because I think we said, was it night fight? I think we made it night fight. Yeah, sorry, night yeah. fight was in effect for turn one and two. Had to be. Yeah. Um, so that really hampered both of us, actually. It sort of made quite a difference. They moved forward. I don't know if I'd have been more aggressive in their shoes, but again, that would have been charging into our units. I think Tiny said it was his first time taking on a Primarch. 
um, yeah. which was pretty insane. So he was obviously a bit cagey about that. They moved forward, but didn't really cause any damage to us. They didn't do much, no, not in that first turn. No, I think his Deradeo pinged off a couple of wounds here and there, but didn't do massively too much. They scored straight away on the objectives, of course, as, as should be in a mission like this. Then our turn to use try to snipe out their Praetor and the jet bike squad. Yeah, but I couldn't get line of sight because they'd moved the jet bikes behind a building. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. couldn't physically see them. So I instead I sniped at their other at Tom's other White Scars unit. I can't remember if it was multi melters or plasma cannons. I think you got did you not get the white you got the um the storm seer, didn't you? I, thought I got not... the storm seer, so I blew his face off. Yeah, oh, like... that's right. He was in the jet bike. He was in the multi melter unit, wasn't he? Yeah. Not in the Keshig unit. Yeah. So you sniped out that and killed the storm seer. So you shot him straight down. Yeah. Um, we had a bit of a dreadnought off in the middle. So my two dreadnoughts charged his one dreadnought that was in the center, and I think only one of mine made contact. Yeah. Uh, and normally when it's a box knot, I think he, I'd put him down to three wounds. He put me down to four wounds at that point. Because he had melters and he shot me. Uh, we had a dro Dreadnought off and I thought, oh, well, it's going to be Dreadnought for Dreadnought. I managed to win the combat, though, and survive with one wound until his Dreadnought exploded. And I rolled <laughs> the fateful one, so my Dreadnought then exploded. <laughs> Which was hilarious. Because, so, you know, like you say, Dreadnoughts almost never survive off a Dreadnought. And yeah. yours? Did and I was... Did? I was so happy, I was like, yes, I, I've even named them. So that one was Ashen Shuruga, and if anyone gets that, uh, that quote, you're a, a very well-educated person. Um, yes, yeah, so Ashen Shuruga went in. I don't think Ashen Shuruga survived any, any um, game by the end of it. Uh, he... I think he lived in game four. Did he live in game four? Was he the boy who lived? Um, Melter Master, which was the name of the other one, because he survived so many Melter shots in a, in a game, he definitely walked away, but Ashen Shuruga died. Uh, my fire drakes, I'm trying to, yeah, they sort of burned forward um, and took on the golden Keshig. Oh, yeah, that's right. So my yeah. fire drakes burned forward, got out. He did his white scars reaction and moved away, which left my fire drake sort of out in the middle of nowhere land. Yeah. I tried to charge. It was a 12-inch charge, and I did roll a 10, so they surged was, forward it six. Was it was a good roll. It was a solid roll, so they surged forward six. And then in the counter charge, the golden Keshig and a Dreadnought charged the Fire Drakes, but I popped the Salamander reaction, and my God, did it save my ass. Because it meant I was yeah, weapon yeah. skill six, the Dreadnought whiffed, didn't hit anyone, the Golden Keshig were hitting on fives, one attack each, even with the Chaplain, I think he got one hit through, maybe two, and he killed one Fire Drake in return, and then all the Fire Drakes just hit back, hitting on threes with hatred, because he's a traitor. Just instant death, all the golden Keshig. Oh, they just they just puffed it to smoke. Didn't they just yeah. So that Salamander's Red advanced mist. reaction just absolutely saved saved that entire yeah. flank. And while all that was happening, Korax was just playing Pac Man. On the other side, yeah, on the other side of the board, yeah. I got a really cheeky twelve inch after moving fourteen to a turn one charge, uh, disordered charge into Big Tom's contempt on the far That's flank, and right. I just managed to clip. Um, White Scar Tom's plasma cannon squad that That's tried right. that tried hosing down my Dark Furies, charged into both of them and wiped out both of those squads. Yeah, and In then and then yeah yeah that was turn one Jesus, and then you continued to Pac Man round all the units in yeah. the backfield. There was a bit of a squeaky bum moment when um, Abaddon dropped down in our backfield. Yes. So also there was an assault squad in Deep Strike as well. So Abaddon and the Assault Squad both came on turn two, deep striked into our backfield. At this point, Korax is up the other end of the board. My Fire Drakes had committed up the board. My Dreads had committed up the board. So our home base was defended by 10 Tax Squad and 10 Snipers? snipers. 10 Snipers? Seven. Seven Snipers. Yeah, Abaddon dropped down. And um, I think this was the luckiest we got. Was he then... So the Assault Squad, you, you intercepted... I intercepted Abaddon and managed to ping two wounds two off, wounds him, off him with the snipers. Yeah, absolutely. Then he went to charge and he failed the charge because he had to he go did. into terrain. Yeah, it was a three inch charge yeah. and plus Five two with terrain. terrain and he rolled Roll a three. three. Yeah, oh, so God, he's it just was staring sitting there. Now, his assault squad made it in and tied up your snipers, but your snipers held. Uh, but yeah, it just left Abaddon sitting there and it was like, oh, it was so depressing. 
because he would have ripped our backfield to pieces and did proceed to do so later on. Um, yeah, he gave us another turn, so Melter Master, my Dreadnought, turned around and came back for Abaddon. Melted, I think I killed one just daring and came back for them. Uh, my tax squad skirted around Abaddon and went to help versus the assault squad. Um, and Korax uh, sounded the horn and retreated back from the other, or moved back from the other end of the field. And so yeah, came back. so he, he, he killed that Dreadnought with his Dark Furies and the bike squad. Yes. Then leapt up the further along their back line That's and right. killed a tactical squad that was holding an objective. Yeah, we should also say you you tried to fatal strike a Derrideo. Oh yes, I tried to fatal strike the Derrideo. Yeah, and that. you had wonderful luck against the Leviathan of James in game one, but uh, not such luck against uh, Tiny and his Derrideo in game oh, three. Oh no, it was ridiculous. So not only did I whiff, so out of the 40, 24 shots that rend, hitting on twos, rending on fours, um, I think I only got about seven rends out of all of those shots. Yeah, and he made. Four out of seven in bumps. He and did. only lost three wounds. Yeah. So the Derrideo um, survived. Yeah. But then I, because they're relentless, I just charged it. So even though I didn't kill it, I did keep it in combat for the whole game because he was hitting me with his feet and doing one wound. Yeah. And I was chainsawing him and doing one wound or losing by one and not running away. So they still did their job even though they, they didn't did. They did. They effectively, because they're very much a sort of one and done unit. You play some very aggressively, you go for that one kill and then you expect them to die. Um, so effectively they did what they needed to they tied up the Derrideo for the entire game until Korax came and actually relieved them well, exactly because I used the charge because we talked about this for a while didn't yeah, we yeah because you were like charge. I can run 21 inches yeah or... so it was like do I run 21 inches or do I just charge the Derrideo and then consolidate off the it. extra 7 inch consolidate yeah. um, from his initiative and that got me up the board to get back to deal with Abaddon it did, it did Abaddon at that point had claimed our home field objective because my attack squad fought the assault squad but failed to kill it they held on the objective then Abaddon smashed in killed all of them and yeah. with him being lined he held our home and scored like 2 VP and then they had other objective so we, yeah, we lost home field for a little while and that actually put the score back in their favour. Um, but eventually Korax got back. My Spartan had basically turned at this point with n nothing to threaten it, had turned around and was just turreting into Abaddon. So I was firing six instant death shots into Abaddon, who yeah. at this point had already taken two wounds. So it was a bit risky to, he's battle hardened one. So he's yeah. not instant deathing, but it's a bit risky to take it on him. I think he tanked one. Uh, he tanked one shot and then failed his save, so he took another wound. So yeah, he took one. down to one. So it was a bit. Yeah, it was too risky to keep doing it. So yeah, the Spartan was just turreting. They did have two javelins that started heading towards the Spartan, but there was a couple of bits of chaff in between them. My dreadnought had had turned around and gone after Abaddon, but Abaddon beat the crap out of it. Yeah, um, he did. He but just, that was that was like wow. Yeah, because I was like, oh, my Dreadnought might hold them up for a turn. Um, charged in, got it, and then Abaddon just smacked it down. I was like, oh, crap, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit tempting. Then Korax made it back and just battered Abaddon to death, didn't he? Yeah, I think it was just, it was Korax versus Abaddon, and Korax just tore his head off. Yeah, him. and oh. fair enough. Fair enough. He may be a great first captain, but he's not a Primarch. No. Um, so, it was really good, again, a really good, fun game. I tried to do everything I could to help Tiny and Tom defeat you. But you were victorious. You yeah. were victorious again, despite my best efforts. Uh, so congratulations. But yeah, I think Korax had made it sort of. He basically did a big square by yeah. the end of the game and got back. So that was. That uh, was it's, it's, it's scary just how fast him and the Dark Fury are. Yeah. Especially yeah. when they get into comp uh, and then can just consolidate seven. That's it. And it's then move fourteen. Pulling themselves around 12, with the charges. They were just and stuff. flying everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, just absolutely mincing stuff and surviving in co like being safe in combat from being shot and just with that many ablative wounds as well, it's hard to chew through. Yeah. So it worked really well. All right, uh, yeah, so we did win uh, game three in the end. Uh, quite convincingly, I think. I think they ended with two rhinos. And, I think uh, that's what they had on the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, we called it a day, didn't we? We just said, uh, if you're happy with that, lads, we were happy with that. And yeah. uh, had a lunch. Right, we'll go into game four. Mission four, the final game of the weekend, was against Liam and Adam, who from henceforth will be known as the Council of Neils, yep. because uh, we had met Liam before at a previous event, and we all went for a uh, Chinese and discovered that we all thought each other's name was Neil. 
despite none of us being named Neil. <laughs> Don't uh, even know how that happened. I have no I idea. So it's the Council of Neils. Uh, so we were all just Neil for the rest of this game. Uh, Liam Neil had a Iron Warriors, and we had been bragging up until this point, and we were like, oh man, like, isn't it really nice? We haven't met any 10-man Lascanon teams. And he was just like, yes, about that. Uh, about that. So he then deployed the 10-man Lascanon team. To then be he... fair, I think he only had eight. Did he only have eight? Oh, well, there you he go. He didn't have the full ten, so, yeah. you know, he wasn't gaming. No, not at all. Um, not as gamey as us, anyway, we should say. No. No. What else did he have? He, oh, he had, had a ten-man siege tyrant squad. Yeah, ten-man siege his, tyrant, Smith the Wardsmith. Ward with Smith. his Wardsmith, that's right. He had two... Attack squads. Uh, melter Predators. Melter that's Predators. That's right, the Melter Preds and then attack squads in Rhinos. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Two Melter Preds with Heavy Bolter Sponsons. Ten man siege tyrants with characters. Las Cannon yep. Squad. Tax Squad. Yeah. Yep. And then Adam, his partner, had Mechanicum with like forty tech thralls. Um four tanks. Now forgive me, I think they're Krios Venators and Krios something or other. I don't know. I just call them the the, the crisps. The crisps. I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, they were the Mechanicum tanks that look really cool but I have no idea what they did. Yeah. Um, he could have made up the rules for all I know. I know he doesn't. <laughs> he definitely didn't. He He's definitely a great guy, but you know, I have no idea what those tanks do. And then he had the me. absolutely terrifying combination of 11 in total, so a unit of 6 and a unit of 5, um, Myrmidons, all with phased plasma fusils. Um, so they've all got 6 plasma shots each. And strength AP 6, three. but AP 3. Um, and then he had a buffed up Warlord in one of the bricks of Thalax. Yeah, Toughness 6, Power Fist, um, 3 up in one save, Magos person. Yeah. yeah, do you have rad grenades and all that jazz as well? Rad grenades on them all yeah. as well, yeah. All, all the cool Mechanicum stuff that you expect to see. All the scary stuff. Um, it was a very cool mission again. Uh, so it's search and destroy, so circle in the middle and then sort of table quarters, and there was one objective just on the tips of your deployment zones. And it was worth 3 VP uh, for when you scored it at the end of your player turn. But you could also elect to basically deactivate your deployment, your objective. So if you thought the opponent might come and take it, you could claim it, then deactivate it. And then to reclaim it, you would basically your opponent would have to hold it for an entire game turn, so their turn and your following, um, the following player's turn to reactivate it. Which I thought yeah. was really cool, because if your objective's threatened, you just go, no, it doesn't worth anything. Yeah, it's a very cool mission. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, we got to go first again, we so we're very lucky in our going first digits. And you, Mordathened, I'll let you explain your horrible, horrible Mordathening. Uh, I, I don't understand why you think it's so horrible. It's just something that we do. <laughs> it's just something uh, that we do. How many points uh, is that uh, unit? That unit is, let me just check on my magical spreadsheet, 215 that points. That is ridiculously cheap for what they do. Yeah, but they only do it once. Yeah, but... The, oh, mate, we're not getting into this again. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the eight-man last kind of teams were obviously a problem. Yeah. So we asked Liam, um, do you have... Uh, any augury scanners because obviously augury scanners push my infiltrate back a, a fair distance yep. and he's like no uh, augury scanners are a crutch losers. yeah he said augury scanners are a crutch that's it augury scanners are a crutch I'm like I, I agree I don't like crutches so yep. I'm glad that you didn't bring any so I infiltrated my Mordathan 12 inches away scouted to within 9 and then fatal struck his last cannons yep. and we all died yes <laughs> yeah you absolutely tore them to pieces yes yeah. However, my Morde fan were then sitting right in front of two Krioses and the Myrmidons. Yes, they yeah, they did revenge strike you pretty savagely. Yeah, but I also think they made a big mistake with that one as well, because their two Krioses fired at me, and then I decided to blow the Raven Guard special reaction, which well, we yeah, haven't you... talked about all week. Yeah, you used it really and... early, actually, in quite well, a lot of missions. Yeah, so I blew it really early, and I... I mean, you could argue that I wasted it, but no, I don't it think meant you did. that they wasted a lot of shooting on it. Yeah. So I popped it on them, so they got four up shrouded against all of the shooting from the strength nine AP one shots and the strength seven rending four up shred blast. That's what I find they, amazing about your reaction, or the Raven Guard reaction, I should say, is because most reactions are like, oh, it gains you this against that shooting, but this gives you the four up, it gives you the move. Is it up to yeah. your initiative? And up to your then, initiative in any direction, yeah. Any direction. And then it's 
four up shrouding against all further shooting, which is yes. phenomenally good. It's phenomenal, unless I play Night Lords. <laughs> Preside. <laughs> it's good, yes. But yeah, so they were, they used up a lot of shooting dealing with a unit that was essentially just chaff by that point. Yeah, so I was going to say that in sort of the wrap up of the units. More data into that sort of. They do that fatal strike and you go, those bastards, I have to kill them. Yeah. And But at that point, they've already done their trick and kind of they're not really worth it. I've, no. I've fallen victim to this before as well. You just go, no, bollocks, I'm going to kill them just out of spite. And you end yeah. up getting pulled all over the place while you're... They have a very just... good psychological effect. They certainly do. Tactical decisions. They certainly do. So, yeah, you'd already killed his last cannons. Then you snipered his siege tyrants who couldn't return fire because they were out of bloody range because you had shroud bombs, you sneaky git. Yeah, they could kill one. They, they killed did. one, yeah. Because he had to return because it was the Iron Warriors... Warlord of Lissatro, it has to return fire, but he can yeah. only. Well, I didn't do it. I, I don't. I, I obviously I fired all my snipers you into did? his warlord, but yes. I didn't do any wounds. You did nothing. I went to the toilet, no. came back, and you'd done nothing to yeah, it. Yeah, it bounced off. It bounced off. He passed all his four up. I mean, I think I only got two reds, and he passed his, both his four ups. Good. I was glad for the traitors having some luck I know against he was. him. I know. I was very very happy. My fire drakes advanced up the centre. Uh, to take on said um, siege tyrants. Um, so I moved, got out. I think they were bubble-wrapped by some tech thralls. So I got turn one charge off against the tech thralls and absolutely yep. turned them to paste. But again, if you're using fire drakes against a 40-point tech thrall unit, what do you expect? Yep. Um, but that did mean my fire drakes were stood out in the open. But two up save, two wounds, blah, 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 blah. So I was pretty happy with that. Your, did Korax get a turn one charge? Um, he did not, but he was in range to charge something turn two. Yeah, so he sort of jumped to our left, where yep. where Adam's warlord was. Yeah, near the Mordothan, just behind the Mordothan. Yeah, Adam had kept a couple of units in reserve, so he'd put them in um, elective reserve just to sort of keep them a bit safe. Yeah, I think he had a Krios. He had another u two units of tanks, both That's the it. different Mechanicum tanks, and two units of Tech Thrills in reserve. Uh... I can't remember if it was two or one, but yeah, he had some tech force in reserve yeah. and another unit of Myrmidons. That's right, but the second unit of Myrmidons in reserve. That's right. Um, their turn one, they spent it all shooting you, really. They did. Yeah. It was wise of them. It was, <laughs> it was wise. Um, yeah, they hammered... So obviously they killed the Mordathan. Did they hammer Korax's unit? Uh, well, they didn't hammer them. They shot at the Mordathan with all the tanks and the... Plasmas of the Myrmidons. Uh, Myrmidons, but I still, because I used the advanced reaction, I moved them out of line of sight of one of the tanks so it couldn't shoot. Uh, That's the other good right. thing about the reaction as well. You can move your initiative any direction, and if the target unit is now out of line of sight of the firing unit, that firing unit is done, it can't fire anything else, which is really oppressive. Uh, but then he hosed me with the plasmas. That's killed right. one of his own, I think. Yeah, uh, he's only got a three-up armor save and he got yeah, hot on himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a cool shots, unit. That's a lot of get-hots that they were rolling. So yeah. it's, it's high-risk, high-reward shooting with that unit. And, and again, because I had the four-up shrouded, he couldn't kill me. I will say, the utter gentleman, he was just like, oh, I don't do one at a time. I just do a whole unit and kill a model at a time, whatever. So playing absolutely gentlemanly. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you didn't deserve to, what you were doing to him, but uh, he was. True. He was. <laughs> True. That's all you can say? Yes, that, that's right. <laughs> um, I then took a shit ton of firepower from the siege tower shooting my fire yeah. drakes. They unloaded into you, didn't they? Yeah, so it was like 30 crack missile shots. My warlord is, effective, is also battle-hardened one, so I tanked a fair few on him because wounds weren't auto-killing him and the Primus Medicaid can still heal him. And then I... Uh, so I think I lost a couple, but not loads. Yeah. My Dreadnoughts at this point, I think they'd been getting sort of hammered a bit, but they were still alive. He then charged my Fire Drakes with his Siege Tyrant, so 10-man brick of Siege Tyrants. I think I had around four Drakes and a very wounded Praetor at this point. And yeah, I think you had three dudes, the Primus Medicae and, and the, the Praetor. Praetor. Left, yeah. yeah, and then I popped the Sally's advanced reaction again, and again, just being weapon skill six, 
extra attack, extra strength, just absolutely saved my bacon. So from, I think they had three attacks each, power fists. I did lose, because we were all going at the same time. I did lose, oh, he challenged out my Praetor and I accepted with my Praetor. So we had a Warlord off. Which was cool. Which was really cool. I lost all my Fire Drakes, but he lost, so what, six things in total? He lost all ten of his Siege Tyrants. Oh, so his Siege Tyrants and his Warsmith. And his Warsmith then lost the challenge against my Warlord. My Warlord turned him to paste and passed all his saves myself. So yeah, my so out of that combat walks my Praetor on his own. On one wound, on I think. On one wound. <laughs> yeah, the great... I think he was dubbed Ga'ari after that, the uh, yeah. by Neil. Um, so he walked... Yeah, so we, I'd taken care of that big block and Korax got into the Mechanicum Warlord, didn't he? Yeah, so again... I was a bit gamey, so I challenged with my you soldier guy? On, no. his, on, on his warlord, uh, and he's like, yeah, all right then, and then Korax goes with his instant death, and instant deaths every single Myrmidon, um, and then the rest of the Dark Furies just tear his warlord into tiny pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You're a terrible, terrible human being. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so after that, it was pretty much of a muchness, wasn't it? Um, we'd yeah, kept been... they lost their two big, really scary units. They'd lost the two big, scary units. We'd been scoring our objective every single turn, and we had redundant units able to walk onto it if at any point we were threatened. Um, Adam's reserves did show up, um, and I must admit, my warlord got gatted down by tech thralls, who walked yeah. on from the board and killed a 200-point unit. And when you find out that they're, uh, they're only 40 points, they had five times their own points efficiency, which was bloody good going for them. They yeah, they didn't really. lose you with those last guns. You did lose to the, the, the laser pens. I did lose to the laser pens. The great Gary went down to uh, laser pens from Tech Thrells. Uh, Melter Master went hunting the other um, Tech Thrells and Myrmidons and all sorts. The yeah, Myrmidons, Myrmidons came on near our flank, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, so the and Reserve Myrmidons came on. Reserve Myrmidons came on, nuked my tax squad that was holding our objective, but they didn't run. Yeah. So they I had, had like I, three left out no, of one, or one. I left the flag bearer. One. So I had the Vexilla because I didn't want him to run off the table. But any passed because he's stubborn on an objective. Not that it, he was stubborn on the objective. And then we had two other tax squads ready to walk onto it anyway. Yeah. And then his strength six plasmas would have been wounding a dreadnought on fives, but then because it's a salamander dreadnought, it was only wounding on sixes. So it was kind of a bad matchup for them. So Melter Master yeah. went. You charged uh, them, didn't you? Yeah, I eventually after, got to them. After they killed two of their own with the Gets Hot. Oh, God, yeah, his Gets Hot. Oh, man. He just tore himself apart. But again, they took everything in their stride and they were absolutely lovely gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I did have a really fun game. Uh, yeah, and again, great, great playing units that I never normally see, which was just really good fun. Well, I think to be honest, that's the best thing about going to events. Agreed. Other than seeing the same people and this meeting up with mates that you only see once every couple of months or once or twice a year, it's just playing different people and different armies. It's so fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fun missions and great terrain. And it was hosted so beautifully by the attrition lads. Yep. Um, right, we'll uh, be back in a second and do a quick wrap-up. So that was our four slash five games with our slagging game in the middle of it all, which was fantastic. Um, how do you think your list went? How do you think our lists went? What was your most fun moment? Oh, do you know what? Our lists were really good. They were? Um, I, don't think, I don't think they were cheesy. They were strong. They were strong? Um, I think there was worse out there. Oh, definitely. Definitely worse out there. Um, the Corex and the Dark Fury were a large amount of my points, yeah. but they weren't the only thing in my army that was threatening. The Javelin did work, the Morde Fang, three out of four games, they were devastating. True. Um, you know, Corex and his, and his boyfriends um, did the business did. in all about the, the Lorgar game, which was hilarious <laughs> yes. for a whole different reason. Yep. Um, so my, like I said, my list had very little fat on it, yours had very little very, in it, but... Yep. With the exception of the tactical squads, which were obviously ideal for objectives yeah. and not running away with the vexes, everything that you had was strong and yeah. decent and did the job as well. Agreed. Um, so we just had, like you said, Hammer and Anvil, two really, really strong lists, one super fast and deadly and one 
slow and ponderous and impossible to kill and deadly. Agreed. Agreed. They worked um, really well. And it was a cool, it was a Shattered Legions theme. We had the Istvan 5 theme going on. Yeah, and I think my favourite moment um, was those crocodiles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The crocodiles were so much fun to buy. Especially so, when you find out what they can do. Like, there were charges. Oh, the weapons go five on the charge. You're like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, they were like, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, toughness five, two wounds, weapon skill five. Uh, sorry, weapon skill um, uh, five on the charge, and then they effectively had chain axes, so they were strength six with set yeah. of shred. It was surprisingly good. brutal plastic crocodiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So fear the plastic plastic crocodile meta from the early learning center. Yeah. Um, they were set. Oh, honestly, I think yeah, maybe Hackybot was uh, possibly my favorite. Just watching that one crocodile that we could not get to to kill. Just yeah. racking up the points was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, my list, as I complained about all weekend, loyalist units are just BS. And uh, Salamander Fire Drakes. There's a reason Alpha Legion players take Fire Drakes, and that's because they're bloody impossible to kill. Yeah. Uh, and they do the bashing back. So they were phenomenal. Dreadnoughts, what can you say? And tax squads, what can you say? Um, my favourite moment, either watching Lorgar smash your tits in, Oh, that was definitely not my favourite Which was <laughs> brilliant to watch. Or just the Crocodile Wars. The Crocodile Wars were great. Just sort of thing, like the Salamanders being like, no, I don't really want to hurt you. And just not being... Like this unit that can go through anything, including Primarchs, struggling against Crocodiles was great. And do you know what? The funniest bit was watching when your Terminators finally got into combat with them properly... And all those brutal twos, and he was passing. Yeah, that's one right. Save every single yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot about that moment. Yeah, he would always roll two dice, and two. there was always one five up. So yeah. your brutal was effectively wasted. Yeah. Most of the time. Most of the time, each crocodile was taken away four brutal hits effectively. Yeah. It was. Yeah, that was phenomenal. That was my favourite. Um, overall, another amazing attrition event. The missions were phenomenal. The atmosphere, I didn't hear a crossword said the whole weekend. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, really good games. The missions were phenomenal. All objective-based, which made it fantastic. Neil and Reese are always wonderful hosts, um, which is why I bother my ass to travel so far to get to them. Um, and that was the last time they were playing in that venue as well, because it's getting torn down and turned into flats, I believe. Uh, yeah, so, so they're now uh, moving over to an area called Chandler's Ford, which is not further, not far away, but it is further I, away. I think it's about an extra ten minutes an from where it minutes. normally is. It's actually quicker for me in a weird way. It's longer for me. In a longer weird for way. you. Good, good. <laughs> you should have to make more effort, guy. Yes, I should. <laughs> but overall, I had an absolutely fantastic event, and uh, I, it was even better for getting to team up with you for the second time, Guy, because the first time we uh, teamed up in Heresy Boyfriends 1 and I did my White Scars and it was Raven Guard and uh, your Raven Guard did all the lifting. That, all that's very true. The lift- At least my this time scars. we got to share in the glory. This time it was definitely a shared effort where we both did something. Yeah, In those games it was just all White Scar, uh, all uh, Raven Guard all the time. Uh, we will end on a sort of a little note, which was, uh, if there is a Heresy Boyfriends 3, we're going to team up again, aren't we? Yes, we are. And I spent the entire weekend whinging so much about loyalists. Oh, I've managed. You ever. <laughs> Bloody hell. I've managed to convince Guy to play traitors at the next uh-huh. one, so I know. <laughs> um, but there is a bit of a caveat, isn't there? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So I spent so long trying to get Guy to be a nice person and to win uh, the most friendly award, and which. Da, 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 da. We did get favourite opponents. We did. It's Yay. the first time I've ever won an award and attrition event. Good lad. So all you have to do in the future is take me and have me slag you off for the entire event, and <laughs> you win a secret. trophy. That's the secret. <laughs> so yes, we were three opponents at the same time. That's it. We were blessed to be voted most favourite um, traitor opponent. So thank you for all who voted for us. Yes, um, thank you. I'm more than happy to win that because it is the a prize that I rate the highest so thank you thank to all. you everybody for voting for it <laughs> thank you um, but yeah so the caveat of you turning traitor is what guy um, then you've got to be um, bring a dick list I have to bring and play a dick list which means tanking on artificer armour and 
doing all I can to be janky and play as hard as possible. So we've made that agreement. I dragged you kicking and screaming to the side of the light, and you're going to drag me kicking and screaming to the side of the darkness. Yep. So good. <laughs> I do look forward to it. If Neil and Reese ever do another event, which I'm sure they will. Another boyfriend event, I should say. Uh, after that, have you got anything you'd like to say? Uh, no, just as always, it's a pleasure playing with you and against Joan. I just yep. wish that we didn't live so bloody far away from each other. No, oh, no, agreed, agreed. Uh, and again, absolutely massive thank you to Guy, yeah, to Guy here. Guy, you are going to come on our channel and uh, play a game during the summer holidays because you're a teacher, so you get yep. lots of holidays. Lots of holidays to drive up to the arse end of nowhere. <laughs> I'm in a city in the arts end of nowhere, but it is the arts <laughs> end of nowhere, yeah. Uh, so you're going to come up, and you are also coming up to our event oh, yeah. in September, yeah. So uh, we're very blessed to have you a couple of times up in the north. Thank it's you fantastic. Much. The invasion of Dien Primus, if you haven't seen, uh, Guy will be there with your Raven Guard, and I'll see if I can't construct some missions to stop you. Thanks very much for that. <laughs> Guy, an absolute pleasure, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. And thank you to all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye now. And of course my washing machine's decided to go mental at this exact moment. Of course it has. But, uh, it's on the spin cycle, right? It is, yes, of course. <laughs> right, let me... <laughs> right, let me just remind myself of names. Pete and James. Bloody hacky croc. Yeah, again, because of your bullshit starting on the bloody table and power drain. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk yeah. about the Mordo fan doing Mordo fan things. Oh god, yeah, the 56 bloody hits. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. 56 wounds on their own army. Oh god, it was obscene. Right.